Hello, I'm John Schneider, Mass Insights Managing Director for Advocacy and Public Affairs. Mass Insight and the Education Trust recently sponsored a briefing at the Massachusetts State House focused on overcoming inequities in advanced placement courses here in Massachusetts. Joining me to talk about the research presented at the briefing is Dr. Christian Hengen, Senior Analyst on the Education Trust's P-12 Policy Team. Kristen focuses on policies and practices that advocate for educational equity and increased access to and success in rigorous coursework that prepares students of color and students from low-income backgrounds for college, career, and beyond. She is the co-author of EdTrust's latest policy brief, Increasing Access to Advanced Coursework. We'll have a link uh, to that uh, here uh, that you can link on to to take a look at. And welcome, Kristen. It's good to see you again. Thanks, John. Great to see you. So I want to begin with a little context setting because I always think that that's helpful when we're talking about a research project. What are some of the benefits of AP classes and advanced courses in general for students? Yeah, we know that there are so many benefits to AP classes and advanced courses in general. You know, research says when students have access to advanced coursework opportunities, they can build confidence, they're more engaged in school, they have higher graduation rates. Um, advanced coursework also allows students to get a jump start on college or their career by maybe earning college credits in high school. Um, and you know, the benefits of passing an AP test and getting college credit are not just reserved for those who get a four or a five, but research also shows that students who get a three or higher perform well in college courses. Um, they're more likely to graduate from college. And students who enter college with approximately eight credits of AP or eight hours of AP credit have $1,000 less debt than average. And we have decades of research that shows that advanced coursework improves academic outcomes, particularly for students of color, students from low-income backgrounds, English learners, and students with disabilities, all who have been historically underrepresented in advanced courses. So we know there are a lot of benefits out there and we wanna make sure we're connecting as many capable students as we can to these opportunities. Now, news broke on February 20th that Massachusetts is once again, number one in the percentage of graduating seniors who have scored a three or better on the AP exam. Uh, Commissioner Riley called the results encouraging, but there are still gaps uh, between white students and students of color in achieving qualifying scores. Why is this such a persistent issue? Yes, Massachusetts' reputation as a national leader in AP performance and enrollment is really impressive, and it's well known across the country. But concerningly, there are these persistent disparities that remain. And our research has identified really four areas where um, there are barriers across the country and in Massachusetts. So first, there are still many schools that don't offer advanced courses at all. So that may not, there may there are schools that may not have any AP courses or any dual enrollment courses or any college and high school courses. Next, schools that serve mostly Black and Latino students are not enrolling as many students in advanced coursework as schools that serve fewer of these students. Third, schools that do offer these courses, especially racially diverse schools, are denying Black and Latino students access. So you can see this if you walk down the hallways of a racially diverse school, but look in the classroom of an AP chemistry class, for example, it often doesn't reflect the racial diversity of the hallway. And finally, students and families may not know about the benefits of advanced coursework. They may not know how to enroll. They may not see themselves reflected in students and teachers in the curriculum. They may not wanna be in the class if their friends aren't in the class or they may know there's a fee for an AP exam, for example, and that acts as a barrier as well. So students may not feel like they belong in those classes. Let's um, dig a little deeper uh, into the data that you uh, presented at the briefing and what specifically did you find? 
Yeah, so we looked at state and school level data from the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and we were really trying to understand how the pandemic may have impacted access to and success in advanced courses and AP specifically. So we compared um, school year 2018-19 to school year 2021-22, and we really found five main things. So first, Black and Latino students are under-enrolled in advanced courses. This was not a surprise to us. This is really consistent with national trends. The pandemic didn't even really affect the disparities, um, which was perhaps a surprise, but the disparities do mirror national trends. About 64% of all Massachusetts uh, 11th and 12th graders complete an advanced course, where only about half of Black and Latino 11th and 12th graders complete an advanced course. Second, we found that schools that are majority Black or Latino are less likely to offer AP than majority white schools. So access is an issue. Third, we found that Black and Latino students lack equal access to AP exams. So we already know research tells us that not all AP enrollees take the exam for a variety of reasons. They may not feel ready or supported to take the test. They may not want to. A fee may be a barrier. But unfortunately, many schools are not giving Black and Latino students equal access to these exams. So in Massachusetts, Black and Latino students make up about a third of all public school students, but they represent only 18% of AP test takers. Fourth, we found that the pandemic did show some effects on students passing AP exams. All students, but especially Black and Latino students were less likely to receive the instruction and supports needed to earn a passing score on their AP exams in 2022 compared to 2019. So in 2022, 65% of all P AP test scores passed, but only 42% of Latino testers and 31% of Black testers earned a passing score. And I'll just say about two in three students in Massachusetts who took an AP test passed. That's pretty awesome. So that shows that the state is doing something right when students are in the classroom. And so we want to make sure that the state's doing enough to get more Black and Latino students also supported to take those tests. And finally, and really importantly, Black and Latino students are more likely to pass their AP tests with a score of three than other student groups. And three is a passing score. Three is a great score. It reflects their really hard work. But out of all Black students who pass their AP exam, 61% get threes. For Latino students with passing scores, 49% get threes. And for all students earning passing scores, 37% get threes, and the rest are getting fours or fives. And so I bring this up because not all colleges in Massachusetts accept threes for um, college credit. So if that's the case, and not all colleges have consistent credit policies, that particularly affects Black and Latino students. Yeah, and that's something that we've been working on um, at Mass Insight over the last several several years is try to bring some, um, you know, highlight that issue and bring some change so that our public institutions uh, are more likely to um, use three as a qualifying score for for college credit. Uh, you 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 and your colleagues also recommend several other strategies to increase equitable enrollment in AP. Uh, can you describe some of those strategies for us? Absolutely. So one thing I'd start with is that the state can require and support districts to expand eligibility for advanced courses. So the door can be opened a little wider. We have great research that shows that there are actually many more students ready for advanced coursework than a lot of educators think. And so it's really about finding different ways to identify students who may be ready, who may want a challenge and supporting them in those classes. Some states across the country have an opt-in policy where if students show readiness, they get an A or a B on a class, they're automatically opted into an advanced option the next year. And we're seeing a lot of really exciting data there in states like North Carolina and Washington state that's really minimizing racial disparities and access to and success in advanced coursework. So that automatic enrollment is a policy that we're really interested in. Also really supporting Black, Latino, and students from low-income backgrounds. Success in advanced courses is essential. Access is one step. We want to make sure students are supported to feel confident in, say, taking the test, getting a passing score on that test. And we really know that that comes down to fostering a positive school climate. 
So we've heard in some of our research that a lot of Black and Latino students say they don't really feel like they belong in an advanced class. They may even be enrolled into an advanced class and opt out of it because they don't see peers who look like them, right? They often may not have teachers that reflect their own racial diversity. The curriculum's not really speaking to them. So schools can go a long way in supporting teachers and thinking about culturally responsive teaching to engage students, um, ensuring their enrollment policies are getting more uh, underrepresented students in those advanced classes, even sharing information with families a little bit earlier, like in middle school is a really important time to share, hey, these are your advanced coursework options when you get to high school. This is why it, this is important. You know, this is how you enroll to kind of break down those hidden barriers that may exist. And finally, I'll say, and a lot of our states across the country can really uh, ensure that they're collecting and reporting essential data to monitor equitable access to and success in advanced coursework. Uh, Massachusetts has a really broad definition of advanced coursework, and it doesn't give us all the data that we may like to see um, for students who are proficient in advanced classes broken down by different races and um, different student categories. So it's doing a good job with some of its AP data and the state can do a little bit better job of sharing more information. So we all know where there may be gaps. In the brief, you highlight uh, the partnership between Boston's Jeremiah Burke High School and Mass Insight as an example of uh, collaborative promising practice to improve AP access and performance. What struck you as significant about uh, this practice between Burke and Mass Insight? You know, first we noticed the data. So we looked at data for a lot of schools and we were trying to see what schools were doing a good job. And we saw that in three years of partnership with Mass Insight, access to AP tests for Black and Latino students dramatically expanded at the school. It saw an eight percentage point increase in Black students taking at least one AP test. It saw a 13 percentage point increase in Latino students taking AP tests. That was from 2018-19 to 2021-22. The school also saw improvement in student performance. So it was both that access and more Black and Latino students earning a passing score. So we were really excited by that data and we wanted to know what their partnership with Mass Insight looked like. And we learned a little bit more about um, the opportunities that these students received, including the Saturday and virtual sessions for students in the summer bridge courses, that's really exciting to me because we know there are a lot of students ready for advanced classes, but they might sometimes need a little bit more support. If this is their first advanced class, they may need a little extra help knowing what this opportunity may look like, right? Making sure that they're confident in this class. We get a lot of, we hear a lot about supporting English learners in AP, for example, and some schools struggle with that. And a really promising way is to support students through those kind of summer virtual or after school options to provide that support when needed. So we were excited about that. And we were also excited about the really strong professional development for teachers um, and not only a sprinkling of professional development once, right? But regular professional development with support, check-ins, access to um, excellent AP mentor teachers across the country. So really the things that we know evidence says is really helpful. We were excited to see at Burke High School. So uh, I guess my last question is, uh, how can we at Mass Insight uh, expand this work beyond Massachusetts? You know, for this study, we looked at Massachusetts and we also looked at three other states, Washington, Kentucky, and Texas. And the, really the good news is there wasn't as steep of a drop off after the pandemic as we were expecting. So the good news is a lot of states are caring about this right now. They want to connect more students to advanced coursework. There's great organizations out there like Mass Insight that are intentionally trying to provide schools and students with more supports. But what continues to stand out are really large disparities for Black and Latino students, students from low-income backgrounds. So we need to be really intentional about ensuring opportunities like AP are not just a privilege, but a pathway open to all students. So thinking about expanding this work beyond Massachusetts, I mean, I mentioned the automatic enrollment and advanced courses op option. We're also seeing some districts try that out when there aren't state policies. There was a federal bill, the Equity and Advanced Coursework Act, that was trying to establish something similar and that was proposed in the most recent legislative session. So there's energy out there thinking about kind of opting more students in, taking out, uh, you know, the need for teachers to recommend students for advanced classes, which sometimes doesn't include all students uh, who may be ready for it. 
Um, so you let me talk about my favorite policy there. And I also always come back to the importance of uh, fostering a positive school climate for students that's actually, it, it's not just nice to have, but it's essential for excellence and success and in advanced classes. So I think that schools and districts are doing a lot of interesting things out there and we need to take stock of what's working. And I'll also say continuing to remove barriers to advanced classes remains really important. We know that the fee can be a barrier to an AP exam. A lot of states are trying to do work to reduce that fee, get rid of that fee. We want to make sure that even filling out paperwork isn't a barrier for students, right? Um, we want to connect more students to opportunities they're ready for. We want to give more students a jump start on college and career journeys. And that really, that means connecting more students who are ready to advance coursework and ensuring they feel confident in the classes. So, well, Kristen, thank you. Uh, it was a great piece of research, uh, really timely and important. Uh, it's been terrific to partner with you and your colleagues at the Education Trust. And I look forward to uh, further work uh, in the future and um, uh, productive collaboration. So thank you again. Agreed. Thank you.